Now I want you to remember to half past seven this morning, and we looked at this guy. This was um, x displacement equals t squared minus four. It was just an example. Uh, we started at initial condition was four units, or sorry, four meters in the negative direction from the origin. And then after two seconds, we passed the origin and then we just kept on going, okay? So when we had a look at this, this idea of average velocity, average speed, etc., all we need to do is when you start and where you end? Where you start, where you end? How long does it take you to do that, okay? So when we look at average velocity, for instance, um, over the first two seconds, right? When you calculated that, x2 minus x1 on t2 minus 2 one, like I mentioned before, average velocity gives you the gradient of the chord between these two spots on the time displacement graph. By the way, just a minor, minor note. This is a time displacement graph. You'll, you'll hear it called the displacement time graph sometimes because the important feature about it is displacement. But um, we would usually say horizontal and then vertical axis, like x, y. So I call this time displacement, okay? The gradient of that chord is the average velocity over this interval of time. Okay, but now that we know calculus, calculus takes gradient and says, you know what, you don't need two points. You don't need two points. You can just say at any particular point, like say right there. Okay, with calculus, I don't need to worry about an interval. I can find out the gradient at a single instant on my graph. Right. So therefore, that's what takes us from average velocity acceleration to instantaneous velocity acceleration. And from now on, basically, if you see these two words, they mean instantaneous. They mean calculus. If they want you to work out the average, they'll say average. Okay. So therefore, if you've got a situation where you know the displacement as a function of time, all we need is to employ our understanding of calculus that we've used in rates of change already to come up with expressions for each of these. Okay. So remember we said velocity is how displacement is changing over time. Okay? So velocity v is simply equal to, I'm just going to differentiate, right? I want to know how x is changing as time is changing. Okay? Now we said acceleration is also really important. It's how velocity is changing over time. So if I call acceleration a, then I'm going to take whatever that expression for velocity was, and then I'm going to differentiate that, okay? So velocity, derivative with respect to time, obvious displacement. Acceleration is the derivative with respect to time of velocity. But of course, because you can see all this is so interconnected, right? I can link acceleration directly to displacement. Do you see that? I just have to differentiate once with respect to time and then do it again, yeah? So therefore, what acceleration represents is the second derivative of displacement with respect to time. Okay. Now, because this starts to get a little bit, um, you know, cumbersome, and physicists who want to use this, they're not actually worried about the calculus. They just once they get the formulas, they just use them, and they don't worry about actually the nuts and bolts of the algebra and so on. They introduce different kinds of notation, which indicate this is really about x displacement changing over time. They call it x dot, and this is how x's change over time is changing over time. So they call it x double dot. Okay? And you will see all of these um, forms of notation. Um, just like when we introduced f dash and f double dash notation, my preference is always to actually just write out what the derivatives are, or to say v or a, because they're pretty much unambiguous in this context. However, you need to be able to recognize when they say x dot or x double dot, what are they talking about? They mean first derivative with respect to time. Second review with respect to time. That's all it means. Okay. Now, here's the right time because we're really going to start talking about acceleration now properly. To get at the fact that acceleration has a colloquial meaning and then it has a very, very specific meaning in our context. Okay? So if I were to say to you, okay, I'm in the car and my car is accelerating. Okay? Colloquially, what would that mean? What words could you substitute that are simpler that would mean the same thing? I'm speeding up, very good. I'm getting faster, okay? So the <coughs> colloquial meaning here is speed is increasing. Okay? Now, along with this colloquial meaning, we have an opposite. What's the opposite of acceleration? Deceleration. It's deceleration, right? So what we would say is, oh, if your speed is not increasing, if your speed is decreasing, if you're slowing <coughs> down, okay? We would call that decelerating, 
right? Okay, so speeding up, slowing down. That's what the colloquial meaning is. However, you'll notice that here, it's actually right that we talk about speed here. Whether you're going forwards or you're in reverse, it doesn't matter. You have speed and you don't care about direction, okay? So this is about distance and speed, but that's not really what calculus is interested in, right? Nor physics. So therefore, in our context, accelerate means something quite different. It means this. Right? It means how is velocity changing with respect to time. Okay? So therefore, in mathematics and physics, when you see the word accelerate, you should um, read into that. Velocity is changing. Is it increasing or is it decreasing? Doesn't matter. It's changing. Changing. It can change in any direction you like. The sign of the acceleration will tell you whether you're getting faster or slower. So velocity, <coughs> excuse me, velocity is changing, uh, which means that really, rather than saying accelerating, decelerating, which you should, by the way, never use the word decelerating. It's just too confusing and it has this colloquial meaning attached to it. It's not worth it, okay? So uh, you will never hear me, except for this moment here, talk about decelerating in this context. Rather than that, I would say I am, I am accelerating in a positive or a negative direction. And in the context of the question, that might mean I'm accelerating up or down. I'm accelerating left or right. Or whatever you want to define. Okay? So let's just think about this for a moment. Uh, let's come back to this guy. So on this graph, right, you can see the velocity is positive. Okay? There is acceleration also happening because the velocity isn't the same all the way through. How do I know the velocity is not the same all the way through when I look at this graph? The, gradient. the gradient's changing all the time, right? So being that the gradient is changing, the velocity is also changing. So if velocity is changing, that means there's acceleration. What direction is the acceleration in? It's in the positive direction, right? So <coughs> velocity is in the positive direction, acceleration also in the positive direction. So therefore, colloquially we'd say, oh, that's why you're speeding up. That's why you're speeding up, okay? Now, if I were to say, take this graph, which is concave up, right? And maybe you want to draw this on the side here as well. And if I were to have it, uh, yeah, black. Okay. If I were to have it concave down like this, okay? Let me ask the same question again. Which direction is velocity going in? <coughs> it's still in the positive direction, isn't it? It's still going up. The x values are still increasing, okay? So velocity, velocity, still that way, but acceleration is in the opposite direction, right? So colloquially, I'd say, oh, you're slowing down. But all I really need to say is, well, acceleration is going to be negative. If I want to think back to geometrical applications of calculus, I'd say it's concave yeah. down. The concavity is negative, right? So that's all that means. That's all it means. Uh, in exactly the same way if I kept going, and I accelerated so much in the negative direction that I turned around, okay? This point right here. What do we call this point? point? We call it a turning point because you do turn around. Um, even before it's a turning point, we'd also call it a stationary point because for that instant in time, you're not moving. The velocity is not positive, it's not negative, you're just flat, stationary. But then your acceleration has pushed you in the opposite direction, right? So this whole time, you are accelerating in the negative direction. What would it look like if acceleration was zero? If I stopped accelerating you? You'd just be going at a constant velocity. It'd be at a constant velocity. Nothing's slowing you down, accelerating in the negative direction. Nothing's speeding you up, accelerating in the positive direction. This object here is experiencing no acceleration. Okay, does that make sense? 